Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, this is my name is Tom Sun, chairperson of the Associate Committee for the SPGA section. Um, and today's special guest is Blake Jurgis, as you see him standing in front of you. Uh, today's uh, town hall is a very uh, special, unique one in that Blake's going to give us a live coaching session today to help all the associates, even members, to uh, conduct their live coaching session and, and hopefully you learn from his uh, session today and uh, obviously we'll have a q a session and try to make this as interactive as possible a quick introduction to uh blake blake is currently the director of player development at uh coda the, the casa golf and racket club in uh, orange county uh, currently he is on the board of spga uh, mm -hmm. section um he five he recently won the Metro Chapters um, Teacher of the Year for, in 2021. And uh, given his first year at uh, his facility, he's increased uh, lesson revenue by 300%. So uh, great to have you, Blake, with us today. Thank you for this innovative idea to uh, conduct the town hall. And the uh, floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And uh, thanks, for everyone, for jumping on. The call is this. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? This is good. Thumbs up. We heard Tom, you can you hear me okay? We okay, perfect. Just want to make sure. Awesome. Well, everyone, thanks so much for, for coming out uh, to this town hall. It's going to be a, a very unique experience. As uh, some of you may know, I, I kind of do things uh, a little bit differently than the, than the status quo may say. And um, when I was asked to this, this uh, town hall, I, I could have canceled my session, but I was like, you know what? Let's just bring the session to the, to the to the section and i think it's gonna be a a unique experience and a very fun one and let's i want to make this as interactive as possible i'm not going to have access to the chat box tom will and uh, if you guys have any questions please feel free to ask at any time um it's a uh, i want to make sure that this is um as interactive as possible as a best learning experience as possible um, because this is uh, something i'm very passionate about is, uh, is coaching and um especially with today's session and I'll kind of explain what today looks like, but it's a, uh, it's called my elite golf performance program. This is a, my elite juniors who are between seventh grade and ninth grade. They compete on the uh, SPJ players tour or Toyota tour cup. They are in group settings. They come out uh, twice a week for two hours. And uh, today they do their skills training session where we, uh, we have some challenges laid out for them as well. Um, so if I kind of go in and out of a, uh, these the kids they're kind of be practicing they're warming up right now they're getting their stuff ready um and then uh we're going to kind of dive deep into into the session today um let me have will let me go right there for me and then uh maddox come on over here in the middle perfect wait what's the um, uh, what's your uh mission for this uh, coaching session with your students today yeah so i think the the mission for today's session is I mean, if this is not a, a typical instruction session whatsoever, um, if you guys have, if you, everybody knows who I am and um, especially after the player development summit that we had uh, last month is my coaching is mostly in group sessions, whether elite junior golfers, whether they're beginner um, ladies, whether um, middle handicap or men, all of my sessions are in group sessions. I coach about 20 hours of, of, group coaching and about five to 10 hours of private lessons a week and the private and then so if i were to say my my mission for you guys to understand is for players to get better and players to get results it doesn't have to work in a private model and so if i were to kind of educate this um the associates today in this town hall is knowing that the private model is not what what we say we would because the private model is one hour of time it, uh, you're usually kind of being the, um, kind of being the, like asking them what they want to work on. They're not getting the results. They're working on their technique for the hour straight. They're not getting any better. They're not seeing the results that, um, they would like. And so within my coaching session, we do a lot of results-based coaching. I make sure I track their rounds. I make sure I track their tournaments. I make sure, um, I'm keeping them accountable. I see them a lot more often than then. Um, I would in a private session. So I see these kids for about four hours to maybe six hours a week. Um, I see my adults probably for four hours a week as well. And we're seeing some really cool results when it comes to that. 
Blake, what, that is, uh, what, sorry, uh, what is your typical uh, clinic size in terms of number of students? Yeah, so this group is uh, between four and six kids. So today we'll have four kids. I've got um, Anson here. I have Maddox right here. I have Sean and we have Will. So my Will's my lefty. Kind of doesn't show his lefty, but then we have uh, the two and then we have uh, Anson over there as a righty. And uh, so these kids, like I said, are, are competing at this level, at a high level. Um, they train together, they practice together, they see themselves in tournaments together. Um, we're creating a team of, of golfers here. And so, um, so let me hold on really quick. Let me kind of explain this session and, and you guys can uh, kind of hear what we're doing today. Today, like I said, is a skills challenge. I'll show you kind of my, my board. Hey guys, come on over really quick. They had no idea what they're signing up for today, by the way. So this is a, a, a unique, even more unique experience that they're like, what the heck is Coach Blake doing today? Um, okay, so let me just go, go what we're doing today. So this is like our program name. Um, today, you guys, we're playing Endgame. Um, Endgame is a, is a challenge game. Basically, what they have to do is they've got to complete all five, um, all five skill sets in a row today. Um, so this first one right here, and if they don't complete it, they've got to stick on that one. Okay, so the first one says leapfrog wedging, and they've got to make 10 in a row. So 10 degrees regulation. Now, remember, these are uh, elite juniors, so I'm going to make this a little bit more difficult for them. All of these games that we have can be used for any skill set. Let me just be very clear. This is a, a challenging um, drills that are going to be kind of frustrating for them, um, which is good because we get frustrated on the golf course as well. And so if we can talk about the emotional levels, that's really important. Um, Wait, uh, so you, sorry, is it possible to bring the board closer to read it? Uh, it's hard to read. Yeah, absolutely. It. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if it. I don't know if it's showing up as uh, of uh, backwards that's right or not. There. That's okay, right cool, there. Yeah. awesome. Um, oh, I could, there we go. There you go. That's perfect. There you go. Perfect. Um, and you. so the the board. So um, like I said, we're trying to challenge them as much as possible. I do this with my. Uh, my 10 handicappers, my 15 handicappers, sometimes my newer golfers, just in a different way of doing it. So guys, let's just uh, go to the first one here. We're going to be doing, uh, so 10 wedges in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we have five wedge targets right in front of us. We've got to hit 10 greens in a row. If we miss at number six, we've got to start to the very beginning again. Okay. So number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The second one, we've got to make eight greens out of 10 greens in the four corners. So um, I know you guys can't see on the range, but we have got a shot about 90 yards, 120, one, uh, about another 120, about 150. And they've got to make eight out of 10 greens in regulation um, before moving on to the, to the next one. So we've got to do eight out of 10, eight out of 10, eight out of 10, and eight out of 10. Make sense? Okay. Next one, we have leapfrog chip. Um, leapfrog chip is kind of a fun one. I've actually, I'll try to show you my computer here. I'll kind of go by. So I've got uh, a group of balls. We have actually eight. I do this with usually four or five, but today's eight. So guys, remember, we've got to land it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a row. And if you miss it, you got to start over. If there's two people at this location, the other person will be waiting. If you miss it, the other person gets to go. Make sense? Um, and like I said, once I explain this, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me at all. Um, next one, we have five drives in a row between two noodles. We got two noodles out on the range. It's about 15 yards wide. They've got to make five in a row. Um, that's a fun one. <laughs> Good luck. And then, uh, the last one, kind of like our, our main thing is, uh, or, uh, distance gapping today. And then, uh, number five is leapfrog 11 flags. Um, again, we've got, uh, one, the five wedge flags, four corners makes it nine flags. The two back yellow or the two front yellows makes it 10, 11. And then a drive would be number 12. Make sense? If you miss that green number seven, you have to start over to the green number one. Make sense? All right, you guys go for it. Good luck. Wait, quick, quick question. Where, where did you come up with these five, uh, uh, I guess, uh, drills? Yeah, so the, the, hold on one second. I got a question. What was that, Sean? Do the one, two, three, five, six, seven, ten. Then that's fine. You can move on to number two. Uh, I mean, this is like just with group coaching in general, just trying to be as creative as possible. I mean, I've been doing 
um, group coaching with juniors um, for a long time. I've been with it for about uh, six years, seven years when I started at Strawberry Farms. It's funny, actually, Maddox and, uh, and Will have been with me for the last uh, about five years now. And let me tell you, they're a lot bigger now than they were five years ago. And uh, so when you do a lot of group coaching, you've got to be really creative with kind of the games that we did. And we, I did this about four years ago. I called it end game. It was kind of when uh, Avengers was coming out and um, I wanted to make this game so hard. And I made, we had like 20 kids participate in a game like this. And uh, we'd have kids run up and down the hills. We'd go, they'd have to go backwards and forwards. It was craziness. And it was so, it was so fun. We had, it was really good for the kids to really get challenged. And so the group coaching model is, is, is so important because it's whenever you ever play golf really by yourself in a competition or something meaningful, if you're going to shoot 80 for the, if you're going to break 80 for the first time, you probably would want to have other people with you because if you break 80 and nobody sees it, it's really a break in 80. And we, we play with other players and kind of, even when we play for $5 or we just play for pride, whatever it may be it's uh it's pretty it's pretty important that we have this group session because it, it is way more fun too these kids have a blast and i know these kids are are, are going to be friends for a lifetime after um after kind of this program when they get to college or if they get to professional golf at all so i think the um and I think it's really cool. It's, I think we had Will Robbins he actually had my facility the last couple of days, and we were just talking about um, something that I struggled with when coming to Cota de Casa. And I, my first came here about a year and a half ago, they're about doing $160,000 worth of lesson revenue a year. And um, I had actually, I was, I was very surprised by that, especially with the, we have 850, 875 members here and we have social members and tennis members and, so we definitely do have a lot of people here, but the lesson revenue was not um, where it was at. And so I was on a mission to kind of create a difference. And so we started the junior academy. We built the junior academy from zero to 75 junior golfers in about a four month period. And that was a monthly recurring basis. And they would pay around $200. So 70 times $200. Um, it's a good money for the club on a per month basis. Um, once I kind of created that, I, I started hiring some really good professionals. Um, um, today I've got actually Brianna Nguyen, who's, uh, who's with me today. She's one of our associates and she likes to watch me a lot. And, um, I've got a great, great team of people that support the Academy that obviously I'm not doing everything here. We've got, uh, Brianna's running the junior Academy. We've got, uh, Angela's running adults. Um, I've got my head professional coaching a lot more, which is, um, he's making more money than he has in the, in the, in the past. And, um, and so we basically were on this mission to um, increase revenue. And so we, what we did was in the, in the first year of being here in 2021 and with a group coaching model and with everything, I'll kind of explain what, how we got there, but we did about $485,000 in our very first year. Um, this year we're projecting to do about $550,000 in lesson revenue. And uh, if you're thinking about from a, a standpoint of, um, for managers, if, if there's anybody that's listening from a general manager standpoint, I mean, if you ask me going from 160 to 550, it seems like there's a lot of money left on the table for a lot of clubs out there and the managers can, and that we've, we've also been see, able to see a value when it comes to less revenue and the auxiliary stuff that happens when it comes into membership, due saved, um, members, new members joining, uh, member spend is a lot higher, um, and the value of a, of a member staying is, uh, is growing for the people that I tag coach. And so they're here for a lot longer of time. So there is a, an importance. And when it comes into the group coaching model, it, uh, it's really cool to see kind of uh, people are on the same systems, they're on the same process, they run the same process. They now are communicating with one another, playing golf with one another. So that part's been really cool to see. So, uh, uh, Blake, if you don't mind me asking, um... So then when you became the director of uh, uh, player development at Kodo, so you started to implement the group uh, uh, clinics, correct? Yeah. Um, and it changed, honestly. Like for me, and Will knows this is, it was, it's so easy to, it's, it's easier to do like 
group juniors up. Um, but I think especially the newer golfers, like the six year olds and 10 year olds is really easy to start doing group coaching, um, running programs. That's probably the easiest for any, any golf course to start doing is a run a group, uh, program for juniors. Um, a little bit more challenging with the, with the elite ones, just because they feel like they need more individual time, but I'll explain how we do the individual time later because they feel like they need to work on their technique more. Um, and then the biggest challenge I had was the adult group coaching. Um, and that's kind of a big stigma is, uh, is, well, the adults just want private time. They want it. They want me there for an hour and that's it. And, and that was, uh, that, I'm guilty as charged. I like people just like, I would say yes to everybody. Hey, let's, I'll give you private, 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 private. And at some point I had to make a shift in my thought and my thought process. And so I started creating some different programs that would make, um, not just like clinics of like, Hey, here's a short game class. Here's a driving class. Here's this. It's like, no people. Yeah. People may want that, but it's not a long, long lasting, um, a, a longer lasting program for these adults. They want, they want results and they want to see their scores drop. And so I started a couple programs. I have a, a program called the 10 shots in 10 weeks program. Basically I guarantee 10 shots in a 10 week period or I coach them for free. If they do, especially if they do work on their stuff, like they practice and they, and they uh, follow my process. Uh, we had actually my, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. My friend, uh, when I, when I, uh, student Sam, he shot 140 in our, in his, uh, in his first session, shot 70 for nine holes. He's rarely played golf before. And it's funny. He, uh, in the 10 shots in 10 weeks program and, and week, uh, five or week six, he shot 110 and then he moved back when T-Box shot 113. Um, and this is, uh, about a month ago and today or last week he shot, he shot 86. Um, and so people, I, that's about 54 strokes. You guys, um, want to talk about stroke saves and people. And, and now I have Sam for a lifetime worth of coaching. Um, I have, uh, Tom Roberson went from a 10, five down to a 5.1 John storage from a nine, five down to a six point or down to a, a five, uh, five, two. If you can get results for coaching, if you get results for these, uh, your students, they're going to see a lot more value in whatever you want to do, whether that's how much you charge, but that's what you believe in. Um, now in group coaching, like these juniors get to do is that they're doing a transfer training practice today. And during some of those times is I get to see them for private, uh, private coaching during those sessions. So we hear for two hours long, sometimes I might kind of pull one aside and go for 15 minutes and work with them on their swing and their technique. Cause they do definitely need some little bit of technique. It's a small piece of the pie. I'd say about 15% when it comes into maybe 10, 15% when it comes into these training sessions. Um, but I really focus on it probably like 5% of the time, honestly, I rarely work on technique. Um, and then uh, the other two hours are on the golf course. And I do a lot, a lot, a lot of coaching on the golf course. And uh, so in the 10 shots and 10 weeks program, we actually do one week on the golf course to kind of assess their game one week off the golf course. And we kind of show them different strategies and we kind of go, back and forth between off course, on course coaching. The next program I have is called the biggest loser program. And that's a 20% 20, 20 guaranteed program. I see my guys for uh, two hours a week, usually on the golf course, we train them on the golf course. And then we do a supervised practice once a week. And those can, uh, supervised practices can be about four to eight people, depending on the day. And the group sessions are between four and six or the on course sessions about between four and six people. Um, depending on the day, but usually about, uh, about four people per, per, uh, on course session. So that was like, my biggest thing was creating this group coaching model within the adults. And let me tell you, it has transformed this club as far as people getting coaching. Obviously the numbers are showcasing itself. Um, the results are, are, we're getting the results for the, for the students and the people are loving the game. They're like, they just like love hanging out with me and love hanging out with the pro. Yeah, it's that kind of the stigma of the private model. It's like a therapy session, but like that's uh that's I'm, I'm I want to be with people that want to be that want to be committed to the game, that want to get better, that um like whether a beginner lady or whether they're advanced junior or uh, a tour player that I coach as well. Just I want to be with compete uh, players that just want to be at a high, just want to compete or play and just get better at the game. Um, okay. Yeah, I want to open up. Open up the question. Yeah. Quick question, Blake. Um, so basically, if I'm understanding it correctly, your the feedback from your um, your groups have been very positive because it's resort oriented based. So they're seeing the results, and so therefore the feedback to you is very positive. Is that generally correct? 
Yeah, one hundred percent. And they're and they're when they're seeing the results, they're telling their friends and their and their other people, and they're saying, "Hey, like we're getting the results." And, and it's not like they're because guilty as charged. And I think that a lot of instructors that can talk about this is um, we've worked on technique, technique, technique. We think the players are getting better. In reality, there it's the same golf lesson you give out week after week after week, and they're and they're not getting any better. And so. It's like, especially when it's, I mean, I know we're on the driving range now and I know I'm challenging these kids today, but like when I'm on the driving range, if I was to give a, a one hour private lesson and work on technique, I mean, there's probably 0% chance that it's going to actually translate to the golf course and they're trying to break 80 for the first time. It's not going to hold under pressure. They're trying to go back to what's comfortable anyway. So what's the, why would I want to make this change in their technique if it's not going to transfer over? I'm, I, I would, especially when I'm working with adults, I want to make sure I'm getting, um, the results faster that's why i do all my sessions on the golf course or why i um, do more skills-based games like this to get them to feel more pressure kind of get the the maybe with the frustration that they might feel in the golf game and and learn how to when you deal with frustration how do we deal with it most of the time it's when we see about golfers it's it's mostly um it's not a technique problem it's a tension problem i mean if you think about if you think about like a lot of these tour players and we talk about like Roy McIlroy when he um, didn't finish the back nine in the masters, he shot 42 on the back nine of the masters. The guy who had a, a huge lead. If you guys remember that, I mean, was it a technique problem? Or was it a tension problem? Was a green jacket getting him in the way? I mean, most likely, right. You think about Greg Norman, you think about these guys that, um, that kind of last 18 or last nine holes and, is it a technique problem or is it a tension problem? Is it, they just lose their golf swing all of a sudden after um, 60, uh, 63 holes? <laughs> Probably not. They didn't lose their golf swing. Um, it's just how they deal with their their uh, their stuff. And so when we're, when we're doing these kind of drills with whether juniors or adults, I want them to feel like I want them to train really, really hard and make it really, really challenging. So when they go to the golf course, they know how to deal with it and they can play easier. Um, so that's kind of why I, um, especially when it comes to in the group coaching model, it's kind of puts that, that, uh, that feeling of on the golf course perspective. What other questions does anybody else have that, uh, before I kind of go into the next phase? Um, so I want to make sure that I make this as, as many questions as possible so I can answer if anything. Yeah. Doug, uh, Raymond, um, any questions from you guys? Nothing from me. Oh, there's Doug. Okay. No. Once you complete the one, then you can go to the next one. Um, so, yeah, then I'll, I'll just continue on. If you guys, like I said, if you want to chime in on anything, please feel free to ask. Like I said, this is um, – I want to make sure that this is not just a – how I do things. Like, because I think – I may be, um, I'm not maybe like the most technical coach you may have ever seen. I may not be the smartest one, but for me, like I can talk to my players. I can communicate with them. I can ask them a lot of questions and they can kind of coach themselves in a way. In a reality, like when the people go to the golf course, I'm not going to be there with them on every single golf shot. So especially if I do a lesson and I work with um, a person, I want to make sure that they feel comfortable with kind of them being on the golf course. Um, one of my, one of my players that's on the road right now in Kansas, and she's got a three day, uh, Epson tour event and we don't have, I can't, I'm not with her at all times. And so we have to be on the same page of how we communicate with one another and that she can caddy herself throughout her round. And hey Blake, that's I have a question for you. yeah, absolutely. How many, uh, how many maximum kids do you take or adults do you take in a, in one of your group coaching sessions as far as like like my ratios or is that yeah like a, how many yeah. people are in the program no ratios yeah so if i'm if i'm doing if i'm doing um like this this group right here in my training sessions i'll, I'll probably put it out to like six to one um these i mean honestly i could i mean i saw these some of these kids yesterday too just for a, like a little session i gave them a little game I honestly don't need to be here necessarily. Like I don't have to, because I gave them a, I gave them already their practice. I have like, like, what am I going to do? That's going to 
Like, am I going to say, oh, hey, great shot, great shot, great shot. Hey, good shot, great shot, good shot, good shot. Okay, good. You give them feedback every single time. They're not going to learn that way. They're not going to get better that way. Um, so I can have – I could literally probably have 12 juniors right here right now by myself if they were, like, obviously um, good like these kids right here that they can kind of work on their own. Uh, but usually I'll have between six to one uh, with my adults if I'm on the golf course with them, if I'm playing with them especially if I'm doing a, like an on-course assessment or if I'm doing an on-course coaching session, I'll try to keep it between three to five. By five, so I've got to be very careful about the pace of play. Um, but uh, if I'm doing a supervised practice, if they're like kind of like this with my guys, and I'll set up about six drills right here, whether it's a leapfrog game, whether it's a – I'll have a track – I have a track man that, like honestly, I'm not fixated on track man whatsoever. It's, uh, I use a track man usually for wedge gapping um or just distance finding or we'll do a performance center where we have like some skills challenges um we'll do uh some driving games iron games um if i'm on the range I'll, i usually spend a lot of time on the putting greens and the short game area but like i said if i was a, if the ratio part is um as long as i can like at some point in the next like four to six months my guess is that i'll have about eight to twelve guys on a on a day and i have them have a, a drill to do or a game to do on the golf course I can go in between groups and it shouldn't be an issue because these guys are they, I don't need necessarily to be there I can set the environment for them so I, like I said I set the environment for these kids I set the environment for my adults on this golf course and they can do on their own I don't necessarily need to be there at all times um, I think I think the the stigma with coaches and instructors feel like they need to be on top of their players at all times where they need to be giving them feedback consistently they need to be um helping these players out because they might be playing bad golf um and so that's why the ratios are that way so it kind of can vary just sometimes it's, it's our junior program like our freshship program that we have here um we'll do about six to one ratio and we'll have two coaches if we have more than six so that's a great question hopefully that answers it Oh, it's like, uh, just a quick question for me again. Yeah. Is it fair to say that the group uh, instruction has been successful because a lot of it uh, is spent on the golf course? Well, I mean, 100%. I mean, why it's, – it's, I mean, let's just be honest really quick. I mean, what consequence do these kids have right now on the, on the range right now? There's nothing – there's no consequence on the range. So – I mean, in my, in my perfect world, when I actually do a skill session like this, we'll train up here sometimes, but sometimes we'll do a training session on the golf course just so we can be out there. Um, and usually in later in the afternoon, our golf course is a little bit emptier, so we're able to do that. Um, if I was at a public facility, I was running a, an academy there, um, I would be, just be having a really good relationship with my head pro, my general manager, and say, hey, when can I go on the golf course? Can I go on the golf course early in the morning, later in the afternoon? Um, do I need to pay for t -dumps? Fine. Like, I'd just be on the golf course all the time because you see value on the golf course um, and value meaning not just people um, like, like payment wise. It's like, no, they see results that way. Like I said, these guys don't, these guys that I'm, that were here are not getting like uh, are not getting, there's no pressure. I'm lucky. I'm creating pressure with this, with this challenging game, but there's no like consequences if they don't, you know, it's like they have another ball with them, you know? So great. Yeah. The on-course coaching is, I mean, at, what, I mean, what Will did at the, at the player development summit, if you guys haven't watched, I don't think it's on YouTube at all, but um, what I would recommend is if you have time, like right now, if anybody watches this, uh, this video or whether it's live right now, if you take out your phone and you were to text one of your clients and be like, Hey, I'm, uh, I'm just learning about this uh, on-course coaching, results-based coaching. I kind of want – I would love to take you on the golf course with a few other people and watch you play. What are your thoughts? Would you want to be on the golf course with me? And 100% of the time, they'll respond back to you within minutes, and they'll say yes. If uh, I would open that challenge up to anybody who does watch this because um, people want to get on the golf course. And I think – I'm not going to necessarily speak for juniors right now because I think the juniors is the – Move back. <laughs> the juniors is the easiest one. The adults one is where you, you've got to get out of your head head that you need to do individual coaching. Um, and I think the individual model, like I said, it is a broken model. It is not a model that is going to be sustaining for you. It, you're going to be dying less than T. 
it's not a, uh, and get, like I said, guilty as charged. And I know there's a lot of instructors out there that could agree with me is working 60 hours a week is uh, on the drying range and in heat is a, uh, is a lot. And a lot of times is you think that you're making more money in reality or not. Um, so one, one sec really quick. Hey guys, uh, to put more pressure on you. So let me have a, uh, who's going to now? Are you continuing? So you're waiting for him. You get to watch him. And then once he's, if he misses, then you get to go and he gets to watch you. Start over. <laughs> does, uh, uh, does, does Doug or uh, again, Raymond or Zach, Zach just joined us. Um, you guys have any questions for uh, Blake at this time? So, yeah, uh, I will so, say, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get into one sec, Tom. I'll, I'll just get into kind of what I was talking about as far as like uh, revenue goes or like money made, especially when I'm talking about the individual model being broken. I want to kind of make sure that I'm not saying everyone doesn't not necessarily need to be individually coached. I think it's okay to be individually coached, but I don't think it needs to be that one hour session that we're everyone's so used to working, like I said, eight, 10 hours just on, on uh, especially when you, <laughs> when you experience, it's like a, uh, the same lesson you give on an eight hour basis. Um, as far as the revenue goes, like for me, like doing the individual model, I don't, I don't make more money. It's, um, it's not necessarily sustaining. And so my goal is to, to double my hourly rate and one, it's good for me. It's good for the, for the students. It's good for their results. It doesn't matter what you charge. If they're getting good results, um, the, your players will pay for whatever it is. Um, they want to see the results for, for their game. And if they see that, then they're going to, they're going to pay whatever it costs to, to do a less, to do a group coaching, to do a, whether a group session or a monthly model or credit model, whatever you want to do. Um, you'll, you'll make, you'll double your hourly rates. So if your hourly rates, a hundred dollars, if we give you an example, if you text uh, four people right now and you said, you uh, said, Hey, I want to go on the golf course on a Tuesday afternoon at five o'clock. Are you in? It's just my hourly rate. We're going to spend about two hours with you. And uh, we're, I'm just going to watch you play golf. It'll be with other people. It'll be a ton of fun. You'll learn a lot. You'll coach them on the golf course. And uh, think about this is that you get four people paying you $100, just make math easy. That means you're making $400 for two hours. So now you just double your hourly rate, making $200 an hour. And they're satisfied because they're just paying a one-hour rate. And they're also um, having a lot more fun while doing it. They're on the golf course with their coach. And they're seeing, uh, uh, and you're working with them and you're, you're supporting them and you're giving them games and there's a good camaraderie going on. So I, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, any more questions, Tom? What do you got? Well, sorry, sorry for interrupting you, by the way. <laughs> it's financially beneficial for all parties involved, the students, yourself, the facility, everyone involved in this uh, great game of golf at your facilities financially benefits because of your group um, lessons focused on result, results and, um, and, and also spending time on the golf course. So uh, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't teach myself, but that just seems like the right, the right strategy, um, which is something that you said is going to be sustainable for hopefully for many years to come. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, I mean, Will is uh, doing some phenomenal things with, uh, with RGX and with the PGA. Um, but it's been really cool to see kind of where the PGA is going. Um, I'll tell you this, PGA is not going backwards and not going back in the 80s and 90s and looking at instruction being a, um, something that we're going to be copying. It's uh, definitely looking to be a modern PGA coach. And if we want to be a modern PGA coach, we've got to transform into what that looks like, which is getting people more value, which value means results, resources. Um, and that's when they're like, you're going to notice like one, it's going to be a big difference in your life too. Like, like I told you earlier, it's like, we don't want to have this um, dying the lesson, lesson team mentality. You know, we want to make sure that we have a sustaining life. We want to have more time with our, uh, maybe even more time playing golf. Um, maybe you want more time doing free stuff. Maybe it's, you have two kids. I've got a, a two and a half year old and a one and a half year old. So you can imagine my time. Um, it can't be out here for 60 hours a day, 60 hours a week. I've got to be with my family. I've got to, I want to see my kids grow up. And so, um, and I'll say this, like 
I'm making twice as much money doing this model um, at this place than I was two years ago. Um, so like that's, I mean, if that, and that's uh, the perspective that if you want to double your income, like why wouldn't anybody want to do this? So, um, and that's why I would say like, when I ask you why it's like, that's, is it an excuse of why you're not wanting to do this? Is it something that you just don't know and you want more information? Is it um, kind of your, maybe you're scared to do it? I'm not sure. I mean, we've, we've, I've seen a lot of professionals that have kind of um, been hesitant to change. And um, it's like, they don't, maybe they haven't seen the value yet because for themselves is they just are so comfortable and they're so busy especially during COVID right now, it's like there's more instructors busier today than there was five years ago. You are probably booked with, if, if you're, I know this is an associate's, but I'm actually going to talk from the membership just in general. But if there is a, if you're booked for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day with private coaching, this is probably not just because you're super busy, like awesome, like really cool. But this is an opportunity to where you can like start to start grouping up your people into these, into these little pods. And again, you'll save more time. Like you don't need to work all the time to make more money. It's like, now these people are going to be, um, are going to be together. They're going to have more fun. It's going to be, um, they're going to get, see the better results. They're going to challenge one another. And I think this is a good time to start transitioning all your individual clients. Maybe not all, like I said, I do a little bit of individual clients as well, but it's like transitioning all of that into, there's some of these people on this, um, to group coaching. And especially with it comes into, if you start with, I would just say, if you already have say 20 clients or 30 clients, move four of them into a thing. Hey, like, what do you guys think about maybe doing an encore session on Thursday nights or maybe Tuesday mornings, maybe first ones out on the back nine, whatever maybe that your course allows you to. Um, that would be something that I would advise um, anybody that's watching this video. Thanks, thanks for this. A very uh, enlightening, at least for me. I um, uh, just wanted to maybe just uh, get to know our associates on the call. I, Doug and uh, Raymond and Zach, are you guys associates? No, I'm a PGA member since oh. 2003. Oh, great. Well, thanks for joining the call today, Doug. What, you have any questions or you have comments uh, for so far? No, it's good to hear. I've been teaching for about 26 years and, uh, and, you know, so it's always good to hear a fresh outlook and, and, uh, yeah, good to hear. I started the junior program at Encinitas Ranch and, uh, so it was pretty successful. Got about 650 kids at one point in the program and it was a lot of fun. So it's fun to, fun to hear young guys trying to make it happen with the kids. It's good. I love it. So what, what are your thoughts, since, since you've been teaching for so many years, your thoughts in terms of what uh, uh, Blake uh, and, and, and his uh, strategy in terms of doing group uh, clinics and uh, spending time on the golf course and, and uh, trying to achieve the, the results that, that his, his clients are looking for? What, any thoughts there? I love the group um, clinics and, and I love skill challenges. I mean, I've yeah, I, I've been uh, running this model for quite some time and with elite kids and all the way to beginners. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. He's doing it. Sounds, it sounds incredible. I would say, I would say like for me and like, I, like I said, um, like that's awesome to hear. I love, um, I love like, obviously my passion was, was uh, I'm not, was it is juniors. And I love, I love coaching juniors. And that was kind of, um, my kind of my, I would say when I looked at why I coach or why I did the things I did and what I believe in, um, like I love coaching juniors. I could, I mean, I could probably spend hours with 10 year olds and just, just have a absolute blast with them. Um, but the one thing that I would say that was, uh, the most cool thing to see for me, especially when it comes like, I think, like I said, I think getting juniors is is really easy like i'm not saying it's easy but it is easy to get like there's so many kids out there that want to learn how to play golf if you run a good junior program and parents talk you will get as many kids as you want um, there are more kids playing obviously today than there have been in the past 
and there's more uh, more golf being played ever and ever since last uh, this past year um and so but the, i would say the my mission especially when i started the academy here and then kind of um moved away from the juniors and kind of just oversaw it especially when our call our beginners or intermediates was doing the adult coaching um and that was because that's where a lot of uh, a lot of stigma with adult coaching. I, I hear a lot of comments as I, I don't get golf lessons because um, I had a private I had a private lesson and my coach told me too much information. I stopped getting golf lessons. Um, it was uh, maybe the comment was it was too much money, you know. And there's so many parents out there that want to get actually coaching. They just don't know how or what it looks like, and, um, or not just parents, just like just adults in general. I would say. So I think um, for me, just seeing like the adults kind of transforming their, their mindsets into what coaching could look like. And I know Josh Alpert can, uh, if he ever watches this, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Um, but like the idea that the adults can experience fun as well in a coaching environment, just like the kids do. Um, like it's, I, I think the like fun is different for every certain level. So for instance, this fun is, this would not be fun for a, for a 10 year old. This would be fun for a competitive 13 year old. Um, this could be fun for a, a single digit handicap on the, maybe on your men's golf association. Um, so I love, I love seeing that transformation with our, uh, within our membership here, as far as everyone's kind of getting is kind of buying into this, uh, this model that, and they're, and they're, and they're seeing the results that, uh, that they haven't gotten before, and especially in golf coaching and, and the lessons, because like I said, guilty as charged doing the private, like doing the one-on-one -on -one lessons and just talking about technique and, and thinking that they're going to get better. And like, Hey, I gave them good information that I, I gave them all the right information. They say, they said they understood it. And then a month later, you give them the same golf lesson and they don't get any, any better. So that's why I would just get out of like, for me, it's not just about, um, the junior aspect when it comes to the group coaching model, I think just get out of the, out of the mindset of the um, people don't really have technique issues. They have tension issues. And these kids are experienced like these kids behind me and, and the adults will experience is they, uh, their technique is usually pretty good. It's mostly their tension issue when it comes under pressure situations. Uh, Blake, I have a question from uh, Steve Monday. And his question is, are group classes better for beginner golfers or do newer golfers need more one-on-one -on -one attention? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it just depends, honestly. If you had, if I had four beginner golfers that are kind of similar level, I would rather them them go through the same thing with with each other, um, because if they are, if they're kind of, if they're experiencing in the same way, they're going to learn a lot faster because they might be learning from other people as well. So they might have a um maybe uh Susie and Lori are together and one person puts it past the hole so much and she's learning like oh, I shouldn't be doing that and so when it when I if a coach is one-on-one -on -one, they become too dependent on that coach especially in a private session so if I were to give an environment even for the beginner golfer and I'm saying beginner like I had actually like I said Sam by the way who didn't play golf at all he like literally barely he he teed off with the, with the eight iron from the red tee box here he was a beginner golfer and there was a lady who was a, uh, or uh, sorry, another, had a lady and then I had another uh, man. A man was a uh, shot like 110 usually. And they were together in a group together as four people. And, uh, and so I would say like, even if I had a really, really beginner guy or really, really beginner girl, it really benefited them to get their, to get their results faster. I would say like, if I just worked on Sam's technique all the time, and if I didn't allow for him to just explore and just learn on his own and with other people, it was going to be like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think I would get the success that he is, is getting right now. And it's funny the other guy in his group, actually, I just saw him on the golf course. He shot a, I think it was like 91 or 90 um, recently after shooting 110 in the very first time. So we're getting those strokes down and, I think that's a proof of concept. If you get the results necessary, then showcase that. Just get the people to under, like get those testimonials, get those people to kind of take those um, saying, hey, I just dropped this many shots off my game doing this program. Like start, start, start keeping those for yourselves. Good question, Steven.
Uh, just wanted to again ask uh, Raymond if you could speak or Zach, is, can you introduce yourself uh, and uh, any feedback, comments, uh, questions from you? Tom, this is Ed. I have a I have a comment if if uh, if I may. Oh, go ahead. Ed. Hey Blake, how are you? Ed Winecki here. Uh, great <laughs> session so far. Good to see you. Um, and thanks for all you do for for our industry, for, for professionals, for the juniors. It's really uh, great to see what you do and how great you do it uh, as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to add to that how great it is uh, that you keep golf, you keep some fun involved with that all the way through. You know, in my years as assistant pro and head pro, I was fortunate enough to run all the junior programs, even when I was Kodo, when I was at Kodo. And I always said, no matter how old the kids are or how old they are, and you know, you teach some of the best kids uh, in Southern California at that elite level, to always keep a little bit of the fun in there, whether that was, you know, 70, 30, 80, 20, but to keep it in there. So I just want to give you kudos for that uh, in, and let you know that how important that is. And I know you know how important it is because we want to keep the passion for the game and the, and the fun going. So I just want to say thanks for, for doing that and keeping the fun involved as well. Yeah, that's great. Ed. And thanks. Uh, thanks for commenting on that. And um, it's uh, I think fun is, and like I said, I think fun is different in all circum circumstances. Like when I give a, <laughs> like, it's, it's funny. It's like the juniors, are like, we're just have a blast. We just joke around with a kid. Like, like I said, Josh Hopper's probably one of the best junior coaches I've ever seen. And just like, he acts like uh, younger than the kids he coaches half the time. <laughs> but uh, it's, these kids are experiencing fun because they're, they're challenging one another, they're learning, they're watching each other. They're seeing kind of how they hit these shots. And, and like I said, I haven't been doing, I haven't done any sort of, instruction we'll say throughout the session but i mean they've hit a lot of quality golf shots and this is fun for them and it's funny i have my biggest loser guys out the other day and and just giving them poop you know just like giving being hard on them and like hey you, you guys can't make that but no chance you know it's like the end of those like those laughs in there and giggles like like it's gonna give it's gonna get bring them back to the game right it's like they want to hang out with you just like how they talk trash their buddies or if you're with, with a, a lady just giving high fives around whether it's and just doing these uh, these fun games is important. It's just making sure that it's um, making sure that it's uh, when you're wh whoever you're kind of coaching, just matching the fun up for them, whatever that level is, whether they're junior golfer, whether adult golfer. So thanks, Ed, for that. I appreciate that. Um, I do have another question, uh, Blake, if you don't mind. Uh, Tom, um, Addison, Tom Addison's raising his hands, Tom. Me? Uh, oh, go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, I can, I can wait. I'll probably forget, but I can wait. <laughs> oh, uh, we got to take advantage of this time. I thought I thought you said Go ahead. The floor is yours. Hey, um, I, actually, I did forget. No, um, you know, I've said this before. Uh, I think it's really important that we start talking about, and we have, start talking about the incremental revenue, or in your case, not so much incremental for golf instruction. What was that number? you 650, is that what you gave? 550. 550. So we went from 160 to five uh, 550. To, to five. It'll be 550 this year. We did 40 our first year of doing. Um, okay. For me can being you say, here, can you say what? And I'm not trying to get anywhere with this. I, I'm just curious. Can you say what the portion to uh, the club what, like? So how much the, the club, club receives? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I won't say necessarily like what, as far as the lesson revenue goes, cause it's kind of a, it's kind no, of different fine. across the board yeah, um, because it, it, cause it, it definitely, I'll say it's probably between about um, it's probably for this. It's probably between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars It's going to come out to about like 65, like 75%, um, like 25% of what they'll receive. So 20 to 25% of that. But I think it's, uh, and I think it's the, the course is not going to make as much money now that we kind of have done this. So they've already kind of made their revenue and they'll be kind of, won't be growing necessarily as fast as it has in, the, in, in obviously this past year, but uh, the incremental revenue, it's like, I think we saved, we saved members from some facility. It was like a crazy number. I think it was like a million, um, like over a million dollars of like over the next like five years of what we'll save from a, from a membership standpoint. So we have on average, uh, 
a member, a golf member will spend about five hundred thousand uh, dollars in a five year period is what they'll spend in, in golf, whether it's dues or whether that's a uh, um, spend on average five hundred thousand dollars. So if you can save a member from the facility and obviously the club corp way is a little bit uh, is I would say it's not necessarily perfect but it's definitely way more forward thinking than any other golf course is doing right now as yeah. far as um, careless operations and or making sure you're taking care of your people um, and making sure that you're seeing value from the from a professional so I think we we made as far as we um, we made more money for the club last year I mean our and our club sales was through the roof last year um, I think we, I think we beat our club sales by a crazy amount. Um, we did like, I think $5,000 or like maybe $4,000 in title of sales and, uh, without me being here. And then last year, we think we did like $75,000 in, uh, in, uh, just like club sales. So that's just with one company. So you can imagine that being across the board as well. So, and, and real fast and I'll be done, Tom, did, since Club Corps started this program, what, three years ago or four, whatever it was? It's, yeah, it's been going for like um, three or five years. Is this, is this kind of across the board what's happening across the country? As far, um, I would say yes. Um, I think there's other, if you're talking about the Club Corps portfolio, I think, yes, they are, um, they're seeing a positive growth and they're seeing kind of, and there are different strategies for different golf clubs because some clubs are, like trying to get rid of members. Some clubs are trying to add like 200 members. Um, some clubs are looking to get golf spend up or maybe get. Yeah. Uh, so it's just different. I think on our circumstance, I think we've made, uh, we're like, probably think we're the number one portfolio, number one club in the portfolio as far as revenue goes. Um, but the biggest change for, I guess, from the coaching standpoint, from the golf standpoint is our golf spend has been up like crazy. And even our rounds been, have been up like ever since rounds are up anyways. Um, and then also the, when I say golf spend, I'm saying the club sales, golf carts, guest fees, um, less in revenue obviously is drastically up. Um, and so they're, they're, they're seeing a huge growth in that. And I know that, um, we had pills, I mean, uh, the CEO and CFO were here, um, a couple of years ago or last year. And they were saying like how this is the number one club right now in the portfolio. So. We've been seeing some well, really cool success from that. that. Yeah, you absolutely. Go. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, that's a great question, Tom. Uh, and lastly, if I may, uh, I know uh, I'm being a GM. Uh, it's uh, maybe a bit challenging to um, work with your uh, the leaders at your facility to have access to the golf course, which is something that you do spend a lot of time on. Uh, any advice for any associates or even that matter, any members who are uh, not getting the cooperation they necessarily need to, to spend that time on the golf course? Yeah, I think, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely in a lucky situation. Like for me, I'm, I'm really close to my GM. I'm really close to the head pro. I have a, a good relationship with them. Um, and it started from that from the very beginning, like, cause I wanted to, I, I try to support the club as much as possible, not just from a teaching standpoint, but from a, maybe from a food and beverage standpoint, maybe from the practice really standpoint, whatever it is, I'm kind of supporting them. Um, and when I I'm helping them out, they're kind of like, Hey, like, like you can do kind of whatever you want at this point, you know? And for me, I would like, if I was to tell like an associate or just, I would just say an associate, like, Hey, just become really close to your GM, like take time out of your day to make sure that you're talking with them on a, on a daily or weekly basis. And if you're probably a leader in like an director of instruction or, or uh, even an independent contractor at a facility, like make sure that you have that relationship with, um, with those people, because that's going to be, it's going to help you out more in the future. If I was a GM, um, I think the, the big thing is wrapping their head around is a teacher actually is a positive thing for the club. A teacher does bring a lot of value, not just in lessons or not just in maybe in rent, but it's also an incremental revenue because they're going to be at the club more often. They're visiting the club. They're spending more, um, more dollars in uh, maybe in range sales if it's a public facility or if they're out here more often they're probably going to spend more money it's in the food and beverage or in the golf spend um so i think that if you see that you need to quantify i think the, the gms need to know that they need to keep track of a quantifiable number that the um the, that the teaching pro is bringing in and so if i was a uh, like i said a gm and i was like hey i want to be an on i want to do a lot more on course coaching it's uh and whatever the times may be maybe it's uh hey you know what you can have the last time two hours before before the sunset 
or hey first tee time on the back nine because i like honestly we're at strawberry farm so we'd have um adults and juniors like we we had a, the first time on the back nine at strawberry farms we had like at 6 40 6 30 sometimes Max, nice, you do a 6 30 private of course maybe not yeah yeah but like, so like we had we've had like on course sessions like first ones out in the morning where we've had four juniors out there and we'd go play golf with them at 6 30, 6 45 in the morning on the back nine. Or it'd be like, I know that some golf courses like offer like the last hour and a half of tea time or daylight left because there's nobody really going out at that time, anyways. And, and honestly, I know there's some public facilities that maybe they're 30 or $40 for a tea time or $50 for a tea time. Um, like those are opportunities like, hey, like, yeah, you know what? You go on the golf course, pay for the tea, pay for the tea times. And be more than happy to go out there if that's the way the case, or maybe it's a, a, a prorated rate for the on course, um, just so they can get some revenue from it. But I would say is, um, and then the, the coach is responsible for kind of building that in the program, which is I think is not hard at all. I don't think that should be an issue whatsoever because people, like I said, people want to be on the golf course. They'll see a lot more value when it comes to that. So I think the GM and the I think the GM and the teacher and the head pro need to be on the same page. And luckily for me, I at Kodo. I'm really close with our head pro. I'm really close to the general manager. And I talk to him on a daily basis. And that relationship that we have is like, we're trying to help each other out. Um, and whether I was at a private facility, if I was at a public facility, same thing. If I was at another private facility, the same exact thing. Because I think it's a, it's a we thing and not just a me thing. Because um, if, if it's a me thing, then um, I'm not going to get the support that they, uh, that they offer me. I think that's so, so, um, so true. Uh, huge believer in that as well, um, building the relationships and so mutually benefits everyone involved. Uh, so it's a win-win situation. So uh, it's, we have about a couple of minutes left. Uh, last minute comments or questions from the audience before uh, we conclude the uh, today's town hall. Okay. Uh, cool. No, uh, no uh, comments or feedback. So Blake, thank you so much for your, your time today. I think it's for me, I think it was very, uh, it was very, um, uh, uh, it was very helpful. And I learned a lot about uh, your, your methods of uh, growing your business uh, as a coach. And, um, and I thank you for your time. And uh, it's great. Yeah. And, and if anybody needs anything, I might put my phone number in the chat box. Um, please feel free to, to email me or text me anytime if I can support in any way. Um, if you want more information on like kind of the, the modern PGA coach, um, please feel free to one, reach out to me, see how we can get you started. Um, it's going to be a transformational, not just for, um, it'll be transformational for yourself, for your career, um, save more time, making more money. And, uh, it's a, it's a great experience for sure. So I encourage anybody that wants to become, a that kind of, uh, that kind of coach, just uh, reach out to me anytime and I can support you guys in any way I can. Thank you again, Blake. Uh, this has been, again, uh, a wonderful session. Um, hopefully it'll be, make a lot of positive impact in people's lives. And we look forward to uh, hearing a lot of feedback from your, from, from your presentation today. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Thank you.